Hello everyone and welcome back to the BewareCast. I hope you're all well and having an enjoyable week so far. This video is going to be, like the previous one, a tier list video. Now in the last one, I was ranking every species to appear in CM Kozeman's All Tomorrows, and in this one we're going to be doing the same thing, but this time I'll be ranking every species to appear in Dougal Dixon's Man After Man. Now a couple of things I should mention before we get started. Basically, Man After Man is a book I'm not quite as familiar with as I am with All Tomorrows. So All Tomorrows, I know it pretty much inside and out because I've done so many videos about it. I've gone through it again and again because I did videos, uh, do, you know, I did species profile videos, I did theories um, back when the channel was fairly new and I covered All Tomorrows exclusively. Uh, whereas with Man After Man, I'm not quite as familiar with it because I've only read through it once. And that was when I did the audiobook, my, my audiobook version of it, which you can find on the channel, by the way. I'll uh, link that in the description below. But that is the only time I've actually read through it. So I'm not as familiar with the story, with the species, because it was a couple of years ago as well, and my memory is absolutely, uh, it's awful. So I find it difficult to recall a lot of the details uh, of the story and of the species. You know, I, some of these I can't even remember their names. However, I do have notes with me to refer to. And also, uh, I will possibly, throughout this video, have to refer to this page here. It's the uh, Man After Man wiki and it's got a list of uh, the species here. I may have to come back to this uh, just to jog my memory basically because I may forget some of the attributes of a species. I may forget its name, <laughs> probably. Um, so, you know, please bear with me. Um, I'll try and keep that to a minimum if I can. And also, the other thing is uh, I probably don't strictly have every single species here. What I do have are the ones that have an accompanying image, because obviously I need something to uh, put up into the grid up here for you know for the sake of this video. So without further ado, let's get started. What we will do is start from the beginning and uh, just work our way through to the end. To be honest, a lot of the species in Man After Man I don't personally find particularly interesting. I've referred to them before as uh, boring monkeys, and I stand by that. I think a lot of them are, I mean, a lot of them are very primate-like, and personally, I just don't find that terribly interesting. Um, you know, you may disagree, but for me personally, I don't find them that, uh, you know, I don't find them that interesting or engaging, because they're so similar to things that have existed in our world already. I like things that are, that really, you know, go, you know, things where the author or uh, the artist has gone crazy with the design, like some of the wacky stuff that you see in uh, Wayne Barlow's Expedition, because that's very, very alien looking things. Obviously with All Tomorrows, the species and that, uh, you know, a lot of them left a big impression on me when I first saw them, whereas nothing in Man After Man particularly has, um, bar one or two, uh, and I will talk about them, obviously, when we come to them. So, anyways, uh, enough um, rambling on, let's get straight to it, uh, so we'll start from the beginning. This one is the, I think, what's that one called? Uh, I think that's the Water Seeker. Um, it's very primate-like, not terribly interesting for me. I mean, water seeker as well. I mean, all, all these things seek water, surely, so nothing really stands out about this one. Uh, these, we've got... So we've got two of the same illustration here because they both have two different species in them. One is the hunter symbiont, and the other one is the... Um, is it symbiont carrier, I think? Yeah, so... We'll rank these two at the same time. Um, I'm going to put them into D tier as well. Hunter Symbiont and uh, Symbiont Carrier. Because I think... I don't know how sustainable it is as a species to be that codependent on something that's different. I, I don't know of anything in nature 
that that has that kind of lifestyle. It's, um, I mean, all you have to do is separate them and they're going to be done for, basically. That seems like a very precarious situation to be in if you're, you know, if, if you're a wild animal. If you absolutely have to be accompanied at all times by a different one that's not even strictly the exact same species as you, it, it just seems like a recipe for disaster to me personally. So, um, yeah, D tier. They may have, I mean, you never know. I mean, in the story, I'm not sure how, I can't remember how far they get, but it's probably not very far because most things get taken over by uh, the uh, Jemez Smoot's descendants, which are uh, here, this one. They basically come along and pwn absolutely everything on Earth, so D tier it is for them. Desert Runner, this one's quite an interesting one in a way because it's a case of convergence evolution, if I remember correctly. Uh, because it, so it starts off as a, I think it starts off as a forest dweller. Let's have a quick look. Um, let's see, Desert Runner. Uh, that's, um, if I can even find it. Yeah, Desert Runner, small swift-footed, desert-dwelling gremlin-like descendant. Yeah, Temperate Woodland Dweller. So it descends from them, from the uh, Temperate Woodland Dweller. Uh, but it evolves the same attributes as the Plains Dweller, but only much later on, about uh, three million years in the future. So that's kind of cool, it's kind of interesting, but again, it's not... I don't know, doesn't really stand out to me. I will put it in C, though, because it is slightly more interesting than these ones. Plains Dweller, uh, I, well, I get an Uncanny Valley feeling from this one. It makes me feel a bit ill, because it's so kind of uh, realistic looking but if you met something like that in real life it would be quite disturbing it has an interesting story it's one of the original five made by the high techs to repopulate the earth so it's got a good bit of backstory i'll put that in c uh the aquatic is quite yeah that's the aquatic because there's the aquatics and there's the aquamorphs in there so aquatics uh they they're in they're one of the original five as well, uh, a more refined version of the aquamorph. Um, they're quite cool, quite interesting. They managed to live a long time um, because they're kind of safely tucked away in the oceans. So I'm going to put them in the B tier. Very uh, very well adapted to their environment, and they managed to survive for a really long time. So that's to be commended. Put them in B tier. Uh, Aquamorph is uh, a very, um, it's like, uh, I mean, they have a very human mind, don't they? Because they are humans that were genetically engineered to have certain attributes to perform underwater work on these uh, great big ships that are going to be taking human beings into space to colonize other planets. They're, they they have an interesting sort of story as well. These are one of the first two that we see that are strictly post-human. Um, I'll put it in... I can't really put it above the aquatics because it's like a less refined version of the aquatics. But um, they do have an interesting sort of bit of backstory. I'm going to put them in B as well next to the aquatics. They, they should be side by side, I think. Right. Uh, this is a parasite, and I don't like parasites. That goes in F, because uh, they're, they're. I mean, there's another image later on of uh, one called a host, and that's a big flabby ogre-looking um, ogre thing, and it's got these little parasites attached to it. Really, it, it makes me feel ill. So F tier for the parasite. This is a vacuum morph, and this is along with the aquamorph, uh, one of the first two that were just engineered for. Uh, a construction of the ships in a certain environment. So the aquamorphs obviously were to perform underwater tasks. Vacuumorphs are for outer space. They're very tough, very resilient. They can survive in space. However, they can't breed. They're sterile. But they are very, very um, interesting to me because it's a very out there design. And, you know, they're intelligent like uh, human beings. I'm going to put them in A tier. I think they're pretty high up when it comes to uh, all these species. I think 
I think A is the right place for them. Tundra Dweller, Seasons Greasons. Um, I still don't get what that meme's all about. I guess it because the picture looks kind of Christmassy. Don't know what Greasons means. It rhymes with seasons, but I don't know. It's the internet. It doesn't have to make sense, I guess. Um, they're, they're, you know, I like the story behind them because this image illustrates where uh, the thing on its back, which I think is a woodland dweller, is sort of, it's off hunting and it picks off a baby tundra dweller. And that story is one of the memorable parts of the overall book um, because, you know, it, it talks about how he, when the baby one kind of cries out when he attacks it, it, it gives him pause for a moment because he thinks, oh, that that sounds familiar. That, al that almost sounds like uh, the way we sound. It sounds like one of us, but he still, you know, he needs to eat. His family needs to eat. So he continues on with the attack and he kills it, but he's sort of there. There's some guilt pangs afterwards as well. So that was an interesting dimension. I'm going to put. I mean, the species itself probably goes into B, but the overall story of that was pretty interesting. But I'm ranking species, not stories, so it's going to go in B. Right, the high techs. These things are absolutely pathetic. They're just these weak, weedy, sick little. Um, dweebs that are encased in these machines and look down on actual human beings for some reason. They consider themselves above them, even though they can't survive outside of their little machines and mating kills them because it's too much for their weak hearts. Truly pathetic, but memorable. Uh, and the design is quite striking. I do, you know, that, that is, it's one of the cooler looking things, but the things themselves aren't cool at all. They're deeply and Profoundly uncool, in my opinion. Um, but they're memorable. And they are quite um, integral to the story because these things, these high techs, they create the five original species that go out and populate the Earth again, repopulate it. So they're not quite good enough for A tier. But they are smart enough to genetically engineer new life forms. Um, maybe they should go. Yes, I think A tier. You know, they're not particularly resilient in any way. Um, but they are very, very intelligent. So I guess A tier for them. All right, these are the. Uh, what are these called? Um. Oh, I've forgotten what they are. Uh, are they? Ca they're not cave dwellers. I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I, you know, what, I'll come back to that one because I'll put it at the end so that I can try and remember its name. Uh, right, the tick. Oh, gross! Absolutely disgusting. I really hate these sort of flabby-looking things with the human face poking out. Just, just unpleasant. Deeply, deeply unpleasant. Uh, I'm not a fan. I think these are evolved forms of the high techs, actually, because they perf they don't perfect genetic engineering. I don't think, but they um, <clears throat> they uh, improve it to an extent to where they graft um, limbs onto themselves, uh, and they don't have to live within machines anymore. I think, but they're they make me feel ill when I look at them, so it's F tier. Right, these are the... I think these are the Islanders. Um, can't remember much about them. Let's have a look at the wiki. I think it's the Islanders. Um, Islander, 50,000 years hence, I believe. Yes, I mean, I've got dark mode on, but uh, yeah, this is that same illustration here. So we'll just look at the overview of Islander. A Where's it gone? Oh, where's it gone? Sorry. Uh, 50... Ah, oh, stupid browser. Um, I can't even find it now. Islander, where are you? Uh, here it is. Fi sorry, sorry about that. Right. A species of uh, diminutive humans descended from temperate woodland dwellers that became isolated. They inhabit the tropical volcanic islands and feed almost exclusively on meat 
and other high protein sources. So again, it's just another another boring monkey, F tier. Nothing exciting about them at all. They're just primates that eat meat and hang out in trees. What's you know, what's exciting about that? Memory people these guys are unrealistic, I think, um, because they actually retain like actual genuine memories of past humans or something. Um, that's not how it works. So, F tier for them. Right, I think this is the forest dweller. Is that the forest dweller? Um, let's have a quick look. They'll be at the beginning, won't they? Because they were an original... Uh, one of the original five, a uh, forest dweller, let's have a look. Yes, it's a forest dweller, okay. So, forest dweller, yeah, one of the original five, quite interesting, designed by the high techs to live in the forested areas. Yeah, they can go in B tier, you know. I don't have anything against them. Not terribly interesting, but not gross to look at, like these lot, so it can go up there. Uh... Tree Dweller, yeah, Tree Dweller, I think. Let's have a quick look. Uh, oh, I'm never going to find it. Yeah, I think that's a Tree Dweller. Uh, again, look, it's just, it's a primate, lives in trees. Big whoop. Right, this one, Jemez Smoot's Descendants, or the uh, Unknown uh, Interstellar Travellers. Pretty, uh, I mean, they're jerks, they just come back to Earth and absolutely wreck everything, but... They have managed, I mean, these are Jemez Smoot's descendants. They've lasted millions, millions and millions of years. Uh, and if they've got the right stuff to survive, especially out in space on different planets, different environments, they've clearly modified themselves. It'll be likely a combination of genetic engineering and evolution. But they are, you know, they're like the cue of this story, basically. They come... They take what they want and they leave again. So, S tier. I think that is the only S tier species in Man After Man as well, for me personally. They, um, they're they the top dogs, so they go at the top in S tier. Uh, <clears throat> fish eater. It's a fish eating monkey. They, I mean, I guess they do have a special skill. They're able to fish. Um, not particularly gross to look at. I think probably C tier for them is is appropriate. Uh, the right the sloth men. These are I quite like the sloth men actually because they do have a pretty good defense mechanism. Because their part in the story, they are being attacked by these guys here, the spike tooths. And basically, you got two spike tooths that attack two sloth men. One of them is older, more experienced hunter, and the other one's younger. And the younger one doesn't know about their defense mechanism which is basically once a spike tooth kind of runs, jumps on its back, it will stand up and then fall backwards and it will crush it beneath its uh, massive bulk. So, yeah, that's I respect that. That's cool. I think these guys will go into A tier. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, uh, let's see. What's that one? Some kind of dweller, one of the original five. Not a uh, not a forest dweller. It's not a tree dweller. I think it might be a temperate. Yeah, I think that's a temperate woodland dweller. One of the original five. It's okay. It's a tree dwelling primate. D. Nothing really to say about that one, honestly. Uh, spike tooth. These are pretty. Um, you know, like I said in that, like I've just mentioned in the story of the uh, sloth men. Spike tooths are pretty interesting. They look really vicious as well. Like, uh, you would not want to meet one of these guys. You would not. Uh, they're pretty, yeah, pretty feral. Pretty tough, pretty vicious. They've got what it takes to survive. They go into A tier. Oh, this thing, right, F tier straight away because it's one of those gross-looking flabby things. It's covered in parasites like these little guys here. You can just see the little figure there attached to his side. I mean, ugh, horrible. And, right, last of all, we've got these ones whose name I still can't bloody remember. Uh, what are they? Are they, um... 
Are they socials? Let's have a look. So uh, social. Um, yes, they're socials, right? Okay. The last one is the socials. Are they kind of... Um, let's go back to that page quickly. Let's have a quick read of the socials. Socials are... Pale, fat humanoids that descended from the communal plains dweller lives in the desert. Their principal enemies are the hivers, which are these over here, I think. Um, which are also kind of gross. They steal their babies and raise them as their own. I mean, yeah, that, that would suck. So, uh, <laughs> feel bad for the socials in that regard. They live in groups with a queen, which... No, hang on, no... Oh, so these aren't the socials. These are the socials, because I think that one there is the queen. It's, uh, yeah, it's, hmm, the layout is a bit, um, it's not that clear in Man After Man. Sometimes you don't really know what it's referring to. I guess it makes sense, because it describes them as pale and fat, and these guys aren't pale and fat. They're the opposite. They look quite lean, and um, they've got, like, a coal sort of colour flesh, so... Oh, so it's these things. Okay, so them. Yeah, uh, they uh, they just get their babies stolen by these guys. And not that interesting. It's yeah. um, F tier. They're lame. So that is the end. Um, <laughs> as I've said before, I'm not a massive fan of Man After Man, to be perfectly honest. Um, the story could be a lot better, and Dougal Dixon agrees with that as well. That's why he wrote Green World, because Green World is what Man After Man should have been, apparently, or very, very close to what it should have been. Um, Publisher Meddling is responsible for the way that Man After Man eventually turned out. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty... It's an important book. I've said this before. Man After Man is an important book because it's it's a, a pretty big contribution to the genre as a whole. You know, speculative evolution as as a genre, it owes a great debt to Man After Man and to Dougal Dixon. Now, he's written other superior books like After Man and The New Dinosaurs and Green World, uh, but Man After Man's a bit of a miss. Uh, for me, and for a lot of other people as well. But, um, you know, there is some interesting stuff there. There's some, some cool ideas. But the designs just really don't do it for me. Uh, and I can't remember a lot of the story as well. It's not that mem that memorable, really. Bits and pieces of it are. But on the whole, yeah, no, no. Not, not great, in my opinion. You may disagree. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, you know, leave a comment uh, with your thoughts down below if you agree or disagree with uh, this tier list. Um, come to think of it, I think there may be a couple of missing species, but again, I was getting all the images from the wiki, and obviously I was just going on the ones that actually had an image. Saying that, there is a one that I can think of that should have been there, but actually isn't, and that's the genetically engineered uh, food creature which looks like a massive blob that would be F tier and also there's the hulking great big um, they're like engineered uh, like beasts of burden they're massive and they've got these like solar panels where their head should be I can't remember what they're called though I think that might be an engineered worker actually no, no, the engineered workers, they work small machinery. Right, so we got, okay. Ah, it's the engineered pack animal, beings of gigantic and voluminous aspect, characterized by their long arms and short legs. So that's the one I'm thinking of, but there's there's no image here, so I didn't include that one. Food creature, that's another one, another one I was thinking of. Engineered worker, yeah, that's, um, I, I can picture the image in my head, actually. They're, they're sort of, Again, they've got like solar panels for heads, and they're tinkering with machinery. They've obviously been bred to uh, have that as their specialty by the unknown interstellar human descendant, aka Jimmy's Smoot's descendant. But yeah, so there's a few here without pictures. That would be um, uh, 
you know, probably probably D tier engineered pack animal because it's uh, just a herd animal really. Food creature F tier because it's gross. Engineered worker. Um, they're you know they've got some special special attributes. They can work with machinery, so probably a B tier for them. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment with your thoughts. Share the video with anyone who you think would find it interesting. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon, because then you'll be notified of future uploads. And um, all that other YouTube jazz. That's about it. Thanks for watching. This has been the Beware Cast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Thanks for watching the Beware Cast. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button along with the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Also, please feel free to leave a comment on this video with your thoughts and share it around with anyone who you think would find it interesting. I'd also like to encourage you to become a patron of mine on Patreon, where, for as little as one pound, dollar or euro a month, you'll have access to exclusive bits and pieces from me, such as sneak peeks of my own upcoming speculative biology book, The Telescope, a study of alien worlds from Earth. The introduction chapter of The Telescope is available on there now, read by myself, so if you want to check it out, then just follow the link in the description. I would also like to thank my current members and patrons who could be seen here. This has been the Beware Cast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.